Our scripture reading for this morning comes from the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verses 7 and 8. Remember those who led you, who spoke the word of God to you, and considering the result of their conduct, imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Amen. Change is hard. Change is really hard. My wife and I were talking the other day about how so many things are changing. You know, and it's sometimes when all those things around you are changing, it's hard to get a grip on it. It's hard to adjust to it. It's funny, Jim and I were talking this morning about getting older and the changes that you go through. And I was telling him about a story about uh, a guy at work that I was talking to several years ago, it has to be about 10 years or so, and we were kidding around about, you know, he was bragging about how he can, he can kick his leg up around this high or whatever like that. I said, I can do that. I was in my 40s at the time. I can do that. He goes, you can. Uh, I said, yeah, I can. I said, stand right there. So I kicked my leg up and right up there, his, around his eyeballs. He said, you can do that. I said, yeah, I can. Well, I think it was last year, about 10 years after that, I said the same thing to somebody else. I can do that. I did it. But I didn't show the fact that I pulled my hamstring. <laughs> I pulled my hamstring. And to this day, a year later, it is very tender. So, I'm, you know, I've noticed that the changes I'm going through... <laughs> I might be able to kick that high, but my body says, what do you think you're doing? So I don't heal as fast as I used to. I, you know, and you, you talk to me about my birthday, I'm free to tell you how old I am, but that doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to tell you. So there, there are many things that are changing all around us right now. You know, my wife and I were talking work. Uh, if, if, I'm on vacation right now, right? And I'm telling you right now, when I go back, things will be different. The last time I was on vacation, all kinds of changes. I'm going, what happened there? What happened there? What happened there? And when I go back this time, there's a new way to do what? Didn't we just institute that two weeks ago? And that's the way it's going on right now. Everything is updated. It's like your phone, right? It, I don't know. I don't own a cell phone. But they update, don't they? They update every once in a while. Your computer updates every once in a while. And it's constant, almost every day, from what I understand. I'm not a techno guru. I don't know. But I've heard about these things. At home. Hmm. Changes at home. Youngest, the baby, graduated high school. It's just, and you sit there and you think, where did the time go? And there's all kinds of other changes, too. The, I think I've mentioned one time about the bird boxes that I built. Well, one of them I built. Melissa built the other one in kindergarten. It's still up. It's falling apart, but it's still up. And every year we get tree swallows. Every year. And those tree swallows are a lot of fun. They'd have their babies and they would leave. And I take the um, boxes, clean them out, and they come back in the spring. Well, this year they tried to come back, but the red squirrels chased them out. And Melissa's having a hard time adjusting to that change. Although the red squirrels were very amusing this morning. I had a lot of fun watching. I also have kingbirds in one of my blue spruces. They think they own my property. They really do. I walk out the door. My wife can walk out the door. Melissa can walk out the door. But I walk out the door, they attack me. They go right for my head. And, and then they veer off at the last second. They don't like me. It's, maybe it's because I, I have a very loud lawnmower and I mow around the tree, whether they like it or not. And today I'm going to test that theory again. 
But change is hard, you know. It's hard to deal with. Here in the church, we've, we've dealt with many changes. John, after 30 some odd years, is no longer preaching here. It's, it's been hard. It's been hard to adjust to that. And we, we miss them. And we miss a lot of other people, too. It's hard to adjust when people leave and get transferred out, like so many people have over the years. Um, just so many changes. Society. What about the changes in society? My goodness. Uh, you, you know, it's hard to, to you hear every day about something new. But then again, a lot of people think this is new. Terrorism? No, I grew up with it. I think all of us here can remember growing up with terrorism and hearing about terrorism on the news. It's nothing new. But there are a lot of things that are, that are happening in society that is change, and not necessarily for the better. So how do we deal with it? How do we deal with it? I'd like to talk about Joseph. Joseph was, was a young lad, right? Brothers were terribly jealous of him. He had that coat of all kinds of colors, right? And his brother, and he was kind of stood out from, for his father. His father was kind of, kind of a, his pet. Joseph was special to his father. He gave him that coat and everything else. Well, Joseph got thrown into a pit. Joseph was taken. I think it was uh, the Midianites or something. Some, I think it was a crowd like that that got him. And then we know from there he goes, and eventually he goes to Potiphar's house. And then, well, what happens after that? Potiphar's wife goes after him. He ends up in prison. From prison, he ends up in Pharaoh's court. Because Pharaoh's having dreams. And Joseph, God gave him the ability to interpret those dreams. But think about the changes that Joseph went through. What held them together? Think about you being thrown into a pit, being cast into exile, ending up as well a servant in a house, having the servants, um, the servants, the master's wife chase after you. You end up in prison. Think about that. How would you adjust to that? What kept him going? It was his faith. It was his trust in the Lord. So what happens to Joseph? He goes from this kid who gets thrown into a pit to being second in command of Egypt. One guy under Pharaoh. Amazing thing. But if he hadn't kept his faith, he hadn't kept his trust, he might have perished in the pit instead of ending up second in command in Egypt. And there was a purpose to that, and I think we all know what it was. What about Moses? Did Moses go through a lot of change? Sure he did. Thrown into the river as a baby. Pharaoh's daughter grabs him, takes him out. And then he gets exiled, runs away, spends a lot of time in the desert, Mary's a desert girl. And then he's told, you're going to lead my people out of Egypt. Whoa. Talk about change. Talk about change. Oh, Lord, you know what? I don't have the ability to speak as I ought to. I can't handle the change. Oh, no, 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 no. You're putting too much on me. But he did it. What about Daniel? Daniel in chapter 2 of Daniel. <coughs> what about Daniel? Daniel with his friends got exiled into Babylon, right? Where Nebuchadnezzar was very, very much 
look at me, worship me. I am the ultimate dude. I, I am the big cheese here. And nobody else is going to worship anybody else but me. That was Nebuchadnezzar. Build this great big statue in my honor and so on and so forth, and everybody's going to bow down to it. That was Nebuchadnezzar. But Daniel kept his faith. And then when the king, Nebuchadnezzar, had this dream, right? He had a dream. Remember, remember the dream? And he couldn't figure out what it was all about. And all the, all the king's servants and all the king's magicians and all, the, all these wise men of the kings couldn't tell him. So Nebuchadnezzar threw a fit and said, you're all going to die. You're all going to die because you couldn't tell me. So kill them all. Kill all the wise men throughout the, throughout the country. But God revealed to Daniel the meaning of the dream. And this is Daniel's response when he was revealed this dream. It says in verse 19 of chapter 2 of Daniel, <coughs> Then the mystery was revealed to Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel said, Let the name of God be blessed forever and ever, for wisdom and power belong to him. It is he who changes the times and the epochs. He removes kings and establishes kings. <coughs> he gives wisdom to wise men and knowledge to men of understanding. It is he who reveals profound and hidden things. He knows what is in the darkness. It is he who changes <coughs> the times and the epics. It is he. So sometimes we look around us and, and you know, I, I get a little concerned when I hear even Christians say that it scares them what's going on around in this world today. It shouldn't scare us by any stretch of the imagination. It should not scare us. Do we need to be a little concerned? Sure, sure we do. Concerned for our kids, concerned for our families, concerned that they will not get caught up in it. Concerned that we as a church will not get caught up in it. But as far as change, the Lord said it was going to come. The Lord said it was going to come. And we are not to embrace it. We're to stand out from it. Because it is God who changes the times and the epics. Let's take a Hebrew. Take a Hebrew. <laughs> let's take a he look. <clears throat> let's take a look at Hebrews chapter one. Wow. I feel like Porky Pig at the end of Looney Tunes. <laughs> Ten through twelve. Hebrews chapter one, ten through twelve. It says, You Lord, in the beginning, laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. And they all will become old like a garment, and like a mantle you will roll them up. Like a garment they will also be changed. But you are the same. And your years will not come to an end. We can take comfort in those words, can we not? Although the world around us is changing at this accelerating rate, although the world around us is so caught up in doing what is wrong and fighting and bickering and warring, our God does not change. He is still the God of love, of peace, and all the fruits of the Spirit. Those are the things that we need to cling to. Not to look around us and feel threatened. Not to look around us and feel frightened. But to continue to look at God and hold to his unchanging hand. 
because he is unchanging. He remains forever. And since we are his, we too remain forever. Hebrews chapter 13, scripture that Jim read. Remember those who led you, start in verse 7. Remember those who led you, who spoke the word of God to you, and considering the result of their contact, imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. The world around us is changing at such a rate, but at the same time, they're saying you must adjust to it. You have to adjust to it. Those things which the world is doing, you have to tolerate. You have to be understanding and adjust to it. You hear it all the time, do you not? <coughs> but we don't. Our faith must remain the same because our Lord remains the same. And he's not going to make exceptions. He is not going to adjust to what the world says we need to adjust to. He is the same. So, what kind of change is good change? There is good change, right? There is. There's, there's positive change. And I don't want to come up here and say all change is bad. Because all change is not bad. There is change that is good. I've always wanted silvery hair. I'm getting it. Right? Change is good. Look at, look at this mustache. It used to be dark. Now it's kind of, it's very white. So change is good. There's other things I can think of. But the thing that God is looking for, the change that is good that God is looking for is the change within. We need to always be changing within. You know, another definition of the word change is transform. Transform. So if you look at Romans chapter 12, mm. verses 1 and 2. Therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good, acceptable, and perfect. We need to be transformed. So change is good. You know, we sing, we sing a song that says, Make me new, Lord Jesus, make me new. For it seems that in so many ways I'm not enough like you. Take this weary vessel that I am in and mold me once again. Take my life, take my spirit, make me new. We are asking in that song for the Lord to change us. We want to be changed into the image of the Son. So change is good. Let's strive for it. But at the same time, with all this change that's going on around us, keep your faith and your trust in God. Because the more you do that, the more you change in here. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, we are just so grateful that we have your word to look upon. We have your word to study to just have it dwell within our hearts. Father, change us, mold us, and make us after your will. Make us new. Because in so many ways, we're not enough like you. And you know we struggle. And we fall. 
But Father, we are wanting to change. We're wanting to change because we want to see you who does not change. We want to see you in glory and just embrace your presence. Father, thank you for the changes that we are going to go through. And ultimately, one day, we'll be transformed into something which is imperishable. Just as you and your word are imperishable. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.